Hello, I'm Jonathan from Boom Instructor Training, and I've been an ADI for 25 years, an ADI trainer for 20 years, and I also own a multiple car driving school, so I have loads of experience that I can share with you. On this video, I'll be giving you seven customer care tips that you can use with your pupils to keep them happy and to keep them coming back for more lessons. Before I get into this, I'd just like to mention if you are a PDI preparing for a part two test or part three test, then check out my website. There are some brilliant part two and part three video tutorials which you can use to prepare for your part two test and part three test. And these are a fantastic learning resource which will massively improve your chances of passing the part two test and the part three test, you will be amazed at how much you learn and enjoy learning from these video tutorials. And if you are an ADI with an upcoming standards check, then on my website are some standard check lesson demonstrations which you can buy. And again, these will be a really big help for you in preparation for your standards check. Okay, so getting back on topic for this video. Now I'd like to start off by saying that there are four ingredients that you will need in order to have a successful long-term career as a driving instructor. And if you don't possess these four ingredients, then unfortunately you will not succeed over the long term. And you'd be amazed at how many driving instructors I've seen come and go over the last 25 years because they didn't possess all four of these ingredients. So these four ingredients that you need are, number one, you need to be good at teaching pupils. Number two, you need to be financially literate. You will more than likely be self-employed, so you need to turn a profit and pay yourself a livable wage. So you need to be disciplined regarding your income and expenditure. In other words, the money that you take from your pupils versus the business expenses that you incur. And this in itself is quite a big topic. So I do intend to do a video in the future discussing driving instructor financial literacy. So um, yeah, keep a check on this YouTube channel and then you can watch that video when I make it. Number three, you will need to generate a regular supply of new pupils. When a pupil passes their driving test, you need a new pupil to replace them. And you'll do this through recommendations, uh, marketing, advertising. You may, if you're an independent driving instructor, you may need to get a website set up. You'll certainly use Facebook and maybe other types of social media. If you join an established driving school on a franchise, then they should supply you with a regular supply of pupils anyway. And number four, you need good customer care. And that's the topic of this video. Poor customer care is one of the reasons that driving instructors lose pupils. I could go through 20 customer care tips because there's loads of customer care tips and ideas that I can share with you. But on this video, I'll just go through what I consider are the top seven customer care tips. Customer care tip one, have a clean and tidy car and make sure you are well presented. You are a professional ADI and your car is your place of work. So present your car and present yourself with a sense of pride and a sense of professionalism. No pupil wants a lesson in a dirty car with an instructor with an unkempt appearance. Customer care tip number two, turn up on time for your pupils' lessons. Turning up too early is a bad idea because this will make your pupil all flustered because they just wasn't expecting you yet. And turning up late is just annoying for them. So if you're ahead of time, I would recommend pulling over and before you get to the pickup location, out of sight of the pupil. So you may want to pull up on the street before where the pupil lives, for example, if you're picking them up from home and just wait. 
and then drive on to arrive at the pupil's house on time. And if you're running late, for example, you're stuck in traffic, pull over, send the pupil a quick message telling them that you're running late and giving them an approximate time when you think you'll be there. At least this way, the pupil knows what's happening. Poor timekeeping is a common reason for a pupil to change driving instructors. Customer care tip number three, be reliable. Don't cancel a pupil's lesson unless it's absolutely necessary. If you're constantly cancelling your pupil's lessons, then you can't expect them to be reliable in return. Nor can you expect them to pay a cancellation fee if they cancel a lesson, if you're often cancelling their lessons. Reliability is a two-way street. So you being reliable means that you can charge a cancellation fee when a pupil cancels their lesson. An unreliable instructor will inevitably lose pupils. Customer care tip number four, provide the full duration of the lesson. Don't short time your pupils' lessons. If they pay for a one hour lesson, give them 60 minutes, not 55 minutes. Pupils will soon feel disappointed if they aren't getting what they paid for. Customer care tip number five, be client-centered and make the lesson about the pupil. In other words, don't constantly talk about yourself. The lesson isn't about you, it's about your pupil. So your pupil isn't paying you good money for them to listen to you talk to them about yourself. Also, don't feel the need to be continually talking throughout every lesson. This isn't necessary and this can be a big distraction for your pupils. So it's fine to keep quiet and let your pupils drive without you talking. When a pupil can drive without the need to follow your instructions, then just tell them that if you're keeping quiet, it just means that you're happy with their driving. And doing this will create a relaxed learning environment. Customer care tip number six, keep calm, don't get annoyed and don't show any negative emotions. You need to have a neutral attitude towards any mistakes or faults that your pupils make. This is just something that's going to happen. It's part of the job. Never raise your voice with a pupil unless it's an exceptional circumstance. So this is worth mentioning. The only time it's justifiable to raise your voice and, and talk quite forcefully is if the pupil overreacts and breaks really hard when it isn't necessary to do so and there's a car close behind. You can't physically intervene, you can't do anything about this other than verbally tell the pupil to come off the brake pedal and you need to do that with some urgency and some forcefulness because there's a real risk of a rear end collision in this situation. So this is the only time that you'd raise your voice and be a little bit forceful. So you'd say, come off the brake, off the brake, something like that, quite, quite firm and forceful. That's the only time really that you can ever justify raising your voice and talking quite forcefully. Um, better to do that and the pupil comes off the brake pedal and we avoid a rear end collision, even if it upsets the pupil a little bit, better that than you speaking really softly. Oh, would you mind coming off the brake, please? Bang, you know, rear end collision. So that's the only time, the only uh, uh, scenario really that you can justify raising your voice. Thankfully, it's very rare and it doesn't happen very often. From time to time, it may well happen, and that's the only time that you can justify raising your voice a little bit and talking quite forcefully. So other than this exception, you should keep calm and relaxed at all times. And when you do need to verbally intervene or physically intervene, do so, yes, with confidence, but with a, a nice, relaxed, uh, friendly approach. 
If an instructor ever gives the impression that they're annoyed or frustrated with a the pupil, then of course this will upset the pupil and there's a, a chance then that that pupil will, well, more than likely not want to continue with their lessons with this instructor and they will move on and find another driving instructor. Customer care tip number seven, send a text message reminder to your pupils to remind them of the lesson the day before the lesson. It's a nice touch and it will save you a lot of wasted time turning up for a pupil's lesson when they forgot they had the lesson. There's no excuse for a pupil to forget about a driving lesson if you've sent them a text message reminder. Okay, so that wraps up the seven customer care tips. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any additional customer care tips which you can share, then please write them in the comments. Also, please do like and subscribe. I would really appreciate this. And do remember, when you're teaching pupils, keep it simple and enjoy it.